Hey guys, this is, I just wanted to let you guys know about my project I've been working on for about six months. This is my late 60s, early 70s, Sperry Ran 6x6 wedge that's powered by skid steer. Uh, when we got this thing, it was just in boxes, had nothing in it except the few chains, the seat, and a few other things. Uh, let's go to engine. This is a Lloyd two-stroke 360cc about that uh, came out came from Germany out of a micro car and how it works is all right let's talk about the clutch system this is a centrifugal clutch that powers the gearbox that goes to the twin clutches that power the skid steer um, these were in parts and pieces I had to go and grind all the rust all off of either one all of both of them and we had to build them we had to figure out how they're built and that took about, mm, I guess, a day. And the chains took about two days. Because we had to get the uh, master locks, I guess is what you would call them. And about three, about four chains were already in here, but we had to do about, uh, I guess, three others. No, four others. And... I, let, I guess we'll talk about how the steering works. So, this, behind this little box, is a, like, I guess it goes like that. And on the end of uh, the rod is two holes that hook up to this right here. And this, whenever you turn it, it, uh, it would pull this in and pull let this out. And it goes to these little rollers that take it to this side and go to the clutch plate. And, um, let me go to this side. So it goes right here, goes to the roller, comes to this roller, and then it would, uh, come to this, I guess, clutch handle that works like that. It has a spring, so whenever you let go of the steering, it pulls it straight back and goes to the bearings that the, uh, bearings actually go up a little they go into a channel that di engages and disengages the, uh, I guess, I'll just say clutch pressure plate. plate. And that what are, what are you holding on right now? What was that, Why? This is a clutch pressure plate. What, what do you got your hands on right now? This right here is yeah, the brake. That is the brake. And so, are the brakes. Uh, we have the not brakes, gotten the brakes yet. Well, do the brakes work? Independently, or do they work as one? They work as at one. Okay. So, can you tell me a little bit about skid steering? Does this does this actually have knuckles? I mean, how does how does it steer? What does skid steer? Do you have any idea? Can yeah, you tell me? it's where one side moves faster than the other side, or yeah, about. And once you when you tear, I guess to the left, it would control the right side which would let go of this side, so that side would be moving a bit faster than this side. Okay. So it'd be that side would say be going 10 miles an hour, this side would be only going about eight or nine, or maybe even seven or five, something like that. Okay. And so what other automobiles or vehicles are around that utilize the skid steer? Tanks. Okay. Tanks utilize the skid steer, but most vehicles that have skid steer don't use steering wheels. They use uh, levers, levers that uh, work it. So, are you telling me that basically this particular brand has has a slight advantage? Yes. Over the other ones by being able to just use a steering wheel, mm -hmm. which we're all accustomed to. Yes. Okay. Well, this looks really interesting. Seems very complicated. And how old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old and you're doing all this. It's pretty impressive. Alright, let's talk about my wheels. So uh, if you notice, there's only three wheels on. Two wheels on this side and one wheel on this side. Uh, the wheels are really crusty and old, so we decided we didn't want to buy uh, actual new tires because they uh, cost a lot of money and we're trying to save as much money as we can right now to work on this so we bought inner tubes that fit these tires we put them in and about well that one stuff one on that side the, in the middle that one actually popped all of them popped except the two in the front 
So, so, so what do you think caused them to pop? You think maybe it's the age of the tire? The age of the tire and maybe we might have uh, chipped the, uh, clipped the inner tube on the bead. Huh. So we're going to go with basic new tubeless tires yes. for this. Oh, I'll be getting those next week. Right. So what's the uh, what's the moral of that story? When you have old tires, do not use inner tubes. And uh, buy new tires. Trying to trying to save a little bit of money ultimately cost you a little bit more, right? Yep. So what else do you have to do to this thing to get it up and running? We have to put the brakes on, get the throttle cable hooked up, which is right here. Got to get the tires on. Uh, we got to hook a battery up. We don't know where we're going to hook that up yet. Um, it's going to go to the starter instead of it being a pull start. Um, maybe if we're, maybe if we have time, we'll hook up the headlights. Okay. Down here. This is a really cool piece. It reminds me of a vintage doom buggy. Look at that thing. Yeah. A lot of it time. is just so neat. And you got, you got a set of headlights down here. Wow. A lot of these didn't come with the roll bar, too. They came came without the roll bar. The roll bar was actually an add-on that people added because the owner of the company, when he was driving his without a roll bar, he ran into a uh, barbed wire fence and almost uh, decapitated himself. So they decided to add the roll bars for extra protection. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the the first generation of the... Sperry ran wedge and what they had on it. They were amphibious. This can be amphibious, but it's not gonna. Uh, so what do you mean by amphibious? They can go in water as along with land. So, so you can go land and water both. So this had a propeller? Yes. Right, can you show me where? About right here is where you can see the little uh, the cracks and stuff. It had a uh, propeller right here that powered it. So you could actually drive this from land right into the water. Yep. And drive it in water. Well, that is very interesting. Um, we're going to be... Oh, yeah. And then we have the exhaust, which is right here. We got cones from Hobby Lobby. And we're going we're gonna to be making them our expansion, cham expansion chamber. Why, why, why does this engine need an expansion chamber? To get a little more power out of it. Because what kind of engine it's is it? It's a two-stroke, and two-strokes need an expansion chamber, or they're gutless, basically. Wow, that's pretty neat that you're just going to be able to find parts. At Hobby Lobby, you found these. Yeah. Well, that's pretty ingenious. You're going to save a lot of money instead of buying something. And from what I understand, this engine didn't even have an expansion chamber. It didn't. What's the rating on this engine, horsepower rating? Do you remember? Uh, about 20. And what are we going to get now with the expansion chamber, do you anticipate? Um, I'm going to say that we're going to get about 40 more horsepower with so it. So 40 additional or just 40 total? Uh, 40 additional. I think probably it's going to be about 40 total. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, so this thing's going to haul butt. And this is pretty much a one of a kind. I mean, there's there's very little of these pieces left, you know, and, yeah. and it's... It's a remarkable piece, and there's a lot of engineering that went into this. I mean, you get very into little of them because they're a fiberglass body, and they would break. Their fiberglass breaks easily, as you know. Okay. So I'm gonna guess that there's very few of them in the world left, because the, a lot of them, when they were going rock climbing or something with them, um, they broke them. This right here is the seat that goes inside of the. Six by six. Wow. It does have a seat belt and it can carry. Uh, I guess you can fit three people, maybe even. So you got the front people. driver and then you got some people that can hang out on the back. Yep. Wow. They really thought this thing through. So basically, it's just a mini, mini uh, sand rail with six wheels. Yep. Huh. Very interesting. So it's not two wheel drive. What would you consider this? Six wheel drive. So all six tires will be gripping the at the same time. Wow, that seems very efficient as far as being able to get in and out of stuff. Huh. Well, there you have it. Another truck project from Wyatt. Very nice. Thank you for your time, Wyatt. Yep.